Well, in the space of a few weeks, the NHS has been forced to shift its entire focus, really, to tackle the coronavirus crisis. We've heard from staff across the UK about the challenges they face, along with shortages of equipment and resources. And last night, our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, and cameraman Adam Walker brought you the story of the doctors and nurses working in the intensive care unit at University College Hospital in London. That's one of the UK's leading hospitals. And tonight, Fergus reports on the way that the hospital has had to transform its way of working. At first glance, it looks like a normal hospital, but coronavirus has changed everything. Ward after ward, has been cleared for COVID-19 patients. I didn't take this seriously enough. Imran is just 37 and has breathing difficulties due to the virus. You don't know how bad it is until it actually hits you. And so I would absolutely urge everybody to listen to the government guidance and stay away from people. He has a wife and two children, everything to fight for. I have felt times where my body has been willing to just give up completely. And I'm not, I'm, I'm a very young and, and fit individual. From the moment patients arrive at A&E, nurses and doctors face the risk of infection. I do worry about my staff because they're being exposed to patients who have a dangerous disease. The man in charge at the hospital throughout this crisis leads from the front. I'm a doctor myself. I work in A&E with coronavirus patients. I'm, I'm also anxious. But on the other hand, we are all professionals. We know how to protect ourselves and we know the risk so we can deal with this. The biggest transformation has been in intensive and high dependency care, where the number of beds has increased fivefold, with plans for even more. But will it be enough? Can they cope with the surge? All those questions are really kit critically dependent on three things, really. It's people, kit and oxygen. We've got enough people, that's difficult, because inevitably we've had staff go off. We have currently got enough oxygen. Uh, our current problem today is having enough ITU-grade type ventilators. If you're purple, you're a confirmed coronavirus case. If you're orange, you're suspected, which is... The very sickest patients will need a ventilator to breathe for them. If you look at our ITU, there are two non-corona patients, um, both of them longer stay, weaning off ventilators slowly. The rest has been taken over by by corona. We've got another hospital that's doing urgent cancer, but this place is essentially becoming a, a huge corona centre, yeah. Sorry. That's OK. <laughs> Everyone going into intensive care must wear full protective clothing. Beds have been created in every available space. So this is an anaesthetic room attached to an operating theatre. And just look inside here. This operating theatre has now been repurposed for two intensive care beds. I mean, it, it's actually rather overwhelming because it just reinforces the level of threat, the level of preparations that are going on here, and just what we are facing. It's the same layout in 10 operating theatres, leaving just two for emergency surgery. Good, OK, you're getting stronger, yeah? All hospital visits have been stopped. Only in exceptional circumstances might a family member of a very sick patient be admitted. It's the personal cost of what's happening to patients, um, which is just devastating sometimes. It's really hard because we can't let all the relatives in to see their loved ones, so while the patients may not be aware, the relatives are really feeling this. Like all of us, the doctors and nurses wonder when life will return to normal. Certainly in my family, we've got a, a holiday booked in August. We're all kind of got that as a date. I don't know if that's a real a hope. Uh, like everyone in the country, you know, um, I mean, in some ways I've got a job, I'm getting an income. I'm not, I know that I'm not suffering like a lot of people are. The whole country is suffering here. And the whole country knows it owes an immense debt to NHS frontline staff. 
putting themselves at risk from coronavirus day after day to save lives. And Fergus is with me now, and uh, that was yet another stark illustration from you there, Fergus, of the immense pressure on the, the staff uh, in that hospital, other hospitals too, of course. On the day that we've had the latest official figures, now what do they tell us? Well, 786 deaths from coronavirus, the highest daily death toll, and each one of those represents a family grieving. So an awful toll. But those grim figures could actually be much worse had the trend kept rising, it could have been far worse. Now, on cases, we had 3,634 confirmed coronavirus cases today. That is actually down, and there are tentative signs that that may be part of a trend. We won't know for a week or so, but it's not accelerating upward. Listening to quite a lot of the content in the, the official briefing in Downing Street earlier today, there was one very interesting admission, really, um, from one of those taking part about the comparison between the UK and Germany. Yes, the chief medical officer, uh, Chris Whitty, said that the UK is trying to learn the lessons of Germany, which is leading the way on testing. So we're doing now about 14,000 tests a day, so better than we were. That's around 100,000 a week. Germany can do 500,000 tests a week. Now, it was right to prioritise hospital patients, um, but we've got to do frontline NHS workers and then anyone with symptoms in the community, community because it is mass testing combined with social distancing to bring down the cases which will enable us to get on top of this epidemic and get Britain back to work. Fergus, once again, many thanks. Fergus uh, Walsh there, our medical correspondent.